So we've got one vice beer and one wine glass. And I can't pour a beer to save my life. And something about vice beer, it's a hell of a lot more difficult. That'll do for now. Right, so if there's one Lightroom editing technique that I use religiously when I wanna add drama and atmosphere to my landscape photos, it is range masking. And that's what I wanna talk all about in today's video. Range masking is essentially a tool in Lightroom that allows us to make very specific selections to our images in order to make very specific edits. Now, with range masking, we can, we can make our selections in two different ways. We can either do it through color, or we can do it through luminosity, which is basically light or shadows and highlights. So I've got three photographs ready in Lightroom that I think are really gonna allow me to explain to you properly what range masking is and how it can benefit our photos, and most importantly, how it can um, add drama and atmosphere to our images. So let's jump into Lightroom now. So this first photograph that you can see is one that I captured only about last week actually on the wonderful Isle of Lewis and this was taken at Luscan Tyre Beach. We had a beautiful evening golden hour and I took a series of photographs. You will have seen an image quite similar to this if you've seen um, a video that I released sometime last week. I'll pop that one up on the screen now. Now this was taken, obviously as I'm sure you can tell, at pretty much exactly the same time. It's just a little bit of a different version. Just a different wave that came in and then receded back outwards. But I really like this version and I think in many ways, um, after it's edited properly at least, I think I might prefer it to the original. So, range masking. To put it really simply, all range masking is allowing us to do is to make very, very specific edits to our photograph physically. So rather than all these sliders on the right hand side um, editing everything within the image, range masking is going to allow us to be very, very selective indeed. So the first thing that I want to change about this photograph 100% are these beautiful streaks that you can see down here in the sand, in the foreground. Definitely on the day, for sure, where I was stood, they were a hell of a lot brighter and we had a lot more contrast down here in the foreground between highlights and shadows, basically. So this is gonna be the first use of the range mask. So I'm gonna go up here and select the brush tool. Now, if you look down here, this tick box, um, show selected mask overlay, let's click on him and that's basically gonna show us where we are applying this mask or this selection. So with regards to range masking, you can be pretty rough um, to start with. You don't really have to think about it too much. Um, so for now, I'm just gonna kind of put it there. So you can see that's very roughly, again, um, selected. I'm just gonna turn the mask off so you can see it a bit more. That's selected all of them white stripes. But as you can tell, let's zoom in a little bit. Um, it's obviously selected a hell of a lot of the sand as well, which is no good because what I'm wanting to do here is basically increase the exposure um, of these stripes, these white stripes, but I don't want to increase the exposure of the sand as well. And that's where range masking comes in. Now you'll find the range mask feature here, range mask off, we want it on. So like I said in the intro, there's two different approaches as to how we can use this. In this instance, I'm gonna use the luminance option. We'll get into color in another photograph in a few minutes time. And that brings up this option here. So I'm gonna bring up the mask overlay again because it's all about what it is we're selecting here, right? So forget about smoothness for a second. We just wanna concentrate on this bar here. And the left hand side here controls the shadows. Right hand side controls the highlights. Now, obviously, them strips or stripes in the foreground are highlights, you know, they're white. And that's what we want selected. So we need to essentially increase here, increase the shadows. You can see how that mask is changing now, now only to select the highlights. So although it looks like it might have disappeared there, if we click off the mask, you see very, very subtly, you can see it more here, what it's selecting. Now I'm gonna reduce it a little bit. I don't think it's affecting enough. So probably about there. 
So you see there, absolutely brilliant. We've used the luminance option, which is allowing us to choose whether we want to uh, um, control the highlights or the shadows. And obviously in this instance, we want to control the highlights. Fantastic, so that's selected. So I'm gonna click off the mask so we know it will change. And now anything we use, uh, anything we edit now is only gonna to apply to that very, very specific section. So if I go crazy, you can see, look at that. Now, we want them stripes brighter, but we don't wanna increase the exposure that much, it just looks stupid. So back to normal, and let's just be subtle about it. You know, something like that, and already you can see, look at that for a difference. First tiny little edit, look how much of a difference that's making. It's already adding, you know, a bit of drama and actually a little bit of contrast into the image as well. Absolutely fantastic. Now, the second thing that I definitely want to edit here is the sea, but only here where the waves are breaking, okay? So only this white area, the blue area or the turquoise area, whatever it is. I'm just going to leave that. That's fine as it is. But this white section, I want it a little bit brighter. I want to increase the exposure. So what can we do? And this time I'm going to use um, the radial filter. So we're going to put that across here like so. And again, remember, like I said before, just be rough and ready. Um, get it across, something like that. It doesn't need to be perfect. Something like that will do. I'm going to bring it in ever so slightly. Um, bring it up a little bit. Yeah, something like that will do me a treat. So show the overlay so you can see here everything outside of this circle is selected that's not what we want we want the inside selected so all you have to do go down to this tick box here click on invert and there you go so that's not a bad selection even in itself however you can see here if we start increasing the exposure now it's going to affect all this area with the sky all the shadows and even these shadows within the um within the white section itself which i want to stay dark because that's going to keep that that beautiful contrast that we want. So um, I'm gonna go down to range mask. Again, exactly the same process as last time. Luminance, and again, we want the highlights affected. So we don't wanna bring this down or else it's only gonna affect the shadows. We wanna bring the shadows up so that they don't get affected. You can see there, it moves away from the shadows, but it stays with the highlights. And that looks like a pretty decent selection to me. So again, I'm gonna click off the mask so that when we make our edit, we can see what we're changing. And you see, look at that. Increase the exposure ever so slightly. And bearing in mind, you know, it's not just exposure. You can you can change anything only within that selection that you want. So if you wanted to increase, decrease the saturation, you could do that. Clarity, all the same, you know. In this instance, I just want to increase the exposure. Now, I don't want to overdo it. I'll probably go for one stop in this instance. Actually, no, that's too much. Let's go for about three quarters of a stop. There we go. Done. Now look at that, before and after. It's fairly subtle, but absolutely fantastic. And that's a great first example of how good the range masking tool is. Now onto this second photograph now, and now we're gonna talk a little bit more about the color side of range masking. Now this is an image that I got up on Helm Crag in the wonderful Lake District, which I miss very much at the minute, admittedly. Um, now, although I think this looks pretty cool to start with, the thing that's that's bugging me is the sky in the sense, this area here. This orange section was a hell of a lot more orange on location, but unfortunately my camera just hasn't quite captured that. So I want to select all of this orange area. I don't want to select the clouds, I don't want to select what's underneath it, and I certainly don't want to affect any of the foreground. So again, this is where the old range masking comes in. Now I'm gonna use um, the radio filter again. And again, I'm gonna say it again, just be rough. It doesn't matter, the range masking will sort us out in a bit. Show the overlay. Again, we need to make sure we click on invert because we want what's inside this circle to be affected. Now again, that's not a bad selection. However, we want the orange, only the orange. You can see down here, this is an orange. If we get rid of the mask, that's black. We don't want to change anything to do with that. So, we go on range mask and this time we're gonna go on color. Yeah, so forget about luminance, this is all about color. Now you can see in this section here, it tells us exactly what to do. Use the color range select, uh, use the color range selector to sample colors within the mask area, okay? So that's basically telling us, choose which color you wanna edit, which color do you wanna work with? 
So I'm going to turn the mask overlay off so we can see the colours. And all we do is click here on this little eyedropper tool, whatever it is. You can zoom in if you want. We want the orange to be selected. So all you have to do is click on the orange. And you can see there, it's applied that. And it's only selecting the orange areas, which is brilliant. Now I'm going to do that again, but with the mask on. Because it's going to give you a really, really good idea of how it works. Obviously that just looks red now, but I and we know that that sky there is orange. Click on there, and you can see, look at that. It's so all you have to do, it's really, it's just automated. We're not really having to do much at all. What I like about this is you can see how specific it is. Even the tops of these hills here have got a little bit of an orange tint to them. And it's even managed to select that, which I really like, because it's all the orange. And if you look down here in the sort of haze through these layers and on the hills, even around the lake, there's a little bit of orange, and we want to affect all of that orange. Show selective mask overlay, it's captured it all. Absolutely brilliant, so that's the range mask done its job. All we have to do now is make the edit. So get rid of the mask again, so we know what it is we're editing. And um, we've probably got two options here. We could either increase the saturation or we could increase the temperature. I think I wanna go with temperature here. Um, I'm gonna try maybe both. A lot of my editing is very much, I don't like overdoing it. So you see like that to me, doesn't look great. Just my opinion, I think it looks overdone. It looks sickly and it definitely doesn't, um, it doesn't correlate well with the rest of the photograph. Um, but um, I still want a little bit of color there. So you see I've increased the temperature loads. Never be worried too much about the numbers on the right hand side. Generally speaking, if you're going up to like 61 on the temperature, that's overdoing it. But just in this instance, it isn't. You know, you're editing the photograph, you're not editing the numbers at the side, as simple as it sounds. So make sure you keep your eyes on the photograph. If we do a quick before and after, look how much that's changed. Absolutely brilliant. You know, fairly subtle, but in my opinion, it's made a massive difference to this image, and it's definitely adding drama, and it's 100% adding atmosphere. Absolutely brilliant. So I don't think I'm gonna add any saturation to that. Let's, oh, maybe a little bit. Let's try 14, yeah, something like that'll do. Before, and after absolutely beautiful so quick done so we can see that huge difference um, so yeah that's how we can affect a certain color with the range mask now this next photograph is an image that I got in Wales in beautiful North Wales um, in a woodland and I photographed this beautiful um, stream and waterfall or weir here and um, a shot that I really really do like but it was an image that I had to do a little bit of editing in um, to again with reference to the video to create drama and to give the image a little bit more of an atmosphere and to give it a little bit of contrast as well and essentially make the image pop you know um, so in this instance we're gonna um, I don't know let's go for the waterfall itself first now what I'd like to do in this situation before I touch anything is just think what is it that I want to change about it? This to me is really simple. It's looking a bit gray up there. It's not looking, you know, when I was there, it wasn't looking gray like that. It was a lot brighter. Plus, if we brighten that up, like I say, it's gonna add a little bit of drama to the image. So I'm gonna go with the brush tool. These three tools here, um, we've got the, the brush tool, the radial filter, and the grad graduated filter here as well. These are just your three selection tools. So all you have to do is choose which one you think is going to suit. All we want to capture, uh, sorry, all we want to select here is this waterfall. Um, sorry, I'm just going to turn the mask on. Now, Lightroom itself, to be fair, um, does a fairly good job sometimes. You can see here, does a pretty good job of knowing. It kind of just guesses what it is you want to select. It knows, works on contrast, and it knows we only want to select the waterfall. So if you can see up in the top here, it's done a pretty decent job by not um, protruding over into them branches or anything. However, down here, it's gone into the shadows a little bit. So, range mask. I'm just going to add a little bit more here. Just down here. As I want to make sure everything's selected. Again, like I've said many a time, just be rough. The range mask is going to do the job at perfecting what it is we want to select here. Onto the range mask. This time, we're going to do luminance again. And exactly like the first image when we were trying to bring the whites out in them strips or stripes in the foreground at Luskan Tire, same concept. So bringing up the shadows, we only want the highlights affected. And you can see there, probably somewhere around there, 
absolutely brilliant and I love how specific this is look see this sort of black strip within the waterfall here it's not even selected that it's only selecting the white areas which is giving us um, uh, it's given us so much control of what it is we want to edit which is what this is all about right so that'll do and get the mask off so you know what you're editing I'll probably go with exposure one thing I'd a bit of advice here is to zoom back out so you're looking at the photograph as a whole um, bring the exposure up a fair bit on that one let's go with 1.5 maybe nope I think that's too much let's just try one stop so yeah, you can see that's a fairly big difference. I'm going to bring up the whites even a little bit. There we go. I think that's better. So you're even being, you know, you're being even more specific by, you know, only changing the whites and not the whole exposure. So that looks great. Now I'm going to show you something else here. We've selected um, this brush at the minute. We know is only going to affect highlights because we've just done it here. So we can brush it in in other areas of the photograph as well. So down here, I want to affect only the highlights. And you can do it, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You know, certain parts of a photograph can be quite different from one end of the photograph to the other. But in this instance, it's working fine, which is allowing us to apply those same edits to different parts of the image. So even around here a little bit, I think that's a little bit too much all these little patches here and we know we can just brush over here because it's only affecting the whites so I'm going to click done on that before and after look at that it's giving the image drama and it's giving the image atmosphere once again and contrast absolutely brilliant and there's a couple more things that I want to do to this photograph um, firstly is this area in the top left I think is a little bit too dark I just want to increase the shadows a little bit but if I just increase the shadows of the whole photograph, you can see it's affecting everything. It's not bad, you know, it'd prob you'd probably get away with it in this situation. But look down here, I quite like the shadows in this section, for example. If I increase the shadows of the whole photograph globally, as it's known, I don't like the effect it's making down here. I want to be more specific. And again, that's where our range masking technique is coming in. So I'm going to use the radial filter this time. And nice and um, rough doesn't really matter let's get it up somewhere like that make sure you check the mask and again we need to make sure we click on invert so everything within there is being affected now in this case the highlights aren't white we've got a lot more color up in this section we're not just working with sort of blacks and whites unlike before so if I zoom in over to this section here you can see that the highlights are actually the colours, so the greens and the oranges and the darks, or the shadows, are these obviously these black areas here. And they're the ones we just want to increase ever so slightly, just so that area is not kind of left out. I think it's quite an interesting area, and I want this section here to be a bit more balanced with this section in terms of exposure. As it stands, this area down here, in my opinion, is nice and bright, well exposed, whereas this area here is too dark, so that's what we're changing here. So we've got... Um, We've got the radial filter here, so we're going to go down to the range mask. Sorry, I'm just going to make sure the mask's on so we know what we're selecting. Range mask, again we're working with luminance, whether it's shadows and highlights. And we're going to, um, this time, we're going to decrease the highlights because we don't want to brighten the highlights. There's no need for it, they're already perfectly well exposed. So bring this down here, and you can see there, it, the mask itself is kind of ignoring these areas here. The greens and some of the oranges, and it's only concentrating on the blacks. Now this bar here or slider that I haven't spoken about is smoothness and this one's nice and simple um, this is just our intensity so how intense do you want to be in the selection above um, we want to be a little bit we want even less of them highlights selected so we're going to reduce the smoothness ever so slightly so that looks a bit of a mess up there but obviously it's just doing a job in terms of telling us what it is we want to change so that's nicely selected and let's go into our editing section here so we've got probably a couple of options to increase these shadows we can either increase the actual shadow slider or we can increase the exposure so you see they both do pretty much a similar job I'm going to increase the shadows because I think if you're increasing we, we, the reason we're doing this is to increase the shadows so to use the shadow slider is being even more specific so if it has caught any of the highlights there by mistake you know that selection then at least we know we're only increasing the shadows. And there, that's all it is. 
Let's look at that, really, really subtle difference, but I think it just helps to give a little bit more of a balance to that section when compared to this section. Now I'm gonna do one more thing, um, and I think this is gonna make a really, really nice difference. And again, it's gonna be um, using the range masker. So I'm gonna use the brush tool, and basically what I wanna do here is increase the saturation, I suppose, of some of these fallen, beautiful autumn leaves down here um, in the foreground, in the bottom right-hand side of this photograph. So let's make our selection uh, all over the shop. Doesn't matter. Now, like I said, I only want to increase the saturation of these leaves down here in the foreground, not of everything that's going on in the background, okay? So we need to use the range mask and we need to use color. So I'm going to get the mask off so we know what colours we're selecting and we're going to get the eyedropper tool and another thing that you can do with this is so for example I'm going to click on orange on that leaf go back onto it look how so you can see where it's getting darker there that is our selection and we can change the amount so we'll probably go some, somewhere like that but another thing that you can do is choose you can hold in shift on your keyboard and you can choose more than one you know, colour. So we want maybe a red there, we want yellows to be affected. We don't want to select greens. So red and yellow between them two will be perfect. So you can see that's still selecting some of the floor. So I'm going to reduce the amount ever so slightly. And there we go, that'll do me. So we'll turn the mask off so we know what we're editing again. And I'm going to zoom out so we've got an overall view of the whole photograph to see how it's affected. So we know now that only these leaves down here have been selected. So like I said before, I wanted to increase the saturation in them a little bit. And that's just because, in my opinion, these leaves down here look quite dull and in terms of saturation compared to this side of the river and perhaps some of the areas up here. So I'm just trying to balance the image out and saturation wise. So I'm gonna increase it. And you can see there, it's only affecting the leaves when I increase and decrease the saturation. Quite a subtle effect and actually, I want them to have a little bit more saturation um, but obviously I've gone 100% now in this instance I'm probably gonna um, add a little bit of warmth to the temperature which is gonna make them a little bit more of a yellowy orange color um, obviously I don't want to overdo it but in this instance even if I put my temperature to 100 it doesn't look overdone on the photograph so with reference to one thing that I said area it doesn't matter if it looks ridiculous here, I've gone saturation 100 and temperature 100. It doesn't matter because on the photograph, in my opinion, it doesn't look overdone. And that's because so little was selected with our range mask. And again, that's in my opinion added, I'm gonna click on done. Let's go before and after. And you can see, look at the difference there between all the things we've done. We've got the waterfall, these cascades, the area up here where we've increased the shadows and the saturation of these leaves. And that, in my opinion, has added drama and atmosphere and contrast to this photograph. And it looks a hell of a lot better. So yeah, that's range masking and definitely a really, really powerful and useful tool for us and landscape photographers to use when we're editing our photographs in Lightroom. And it's definitely one of my favorite techniques. And um, yeah, like I've kept saying, I use it very very often to try and add drama to my photographs and um, so I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video something a little bit different from me and um, please let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see more editing videos and if so what would you like me to cover um, but thank you guys so much for watching cheers for the continued support and I'll see you on the next video please give the video a like if you have a second like I said remember to comment below with, uh, with your thoughts and subscribe if you are new. Thanks again, out.